We don't have a single metric of humans that we can measure that better predicts how long they will live than how high their VO2 max is. And it's not even close, to be completely clear. So if you compare somebody who is in the top 2% to someone who is in the bottom 25%, for their age, uh, the difference in mortality is 5x. 500%. Yes, 400% technically, because with hazard ratios, you have two, a 2x hazard ratio is 100%. This is why I can say with absolute certainty, nothing compares to exercise. Nothing compares to having a high VO2 max, high muscle mass, and high muscle strength. They are more beneficial for you then any bad thing you can think of is bad for you. Everybody knows that if you smoke or have diabetes, your risk of death goes up a lot. But your risk of death from having high cardiorespiratory fitness goes down by much more than your risk of death goes up from smoking or diabetes. So smoking and diabetes will double or triple your risk of death, depending on the time frame you're looking at. Having very high cardiorespiratory fitness, so having a VO2 max that is elite, we would define that as the top 2.5% of the population, compared to below average, is a five-fold reduction in all-cause mortality. Death from any kind. Whoa. And then when you layer in strength and muscle mass, um, we actually now have pretty good data as to the fact that strength is more important than muscle mass. We just use, muscle mass is a good proxy for strength, but if you just focus on strength, that's the metric that matters. It's about a threefold reduction in all-cause mortality when you compare high strength to low strength. Exercise is the single biggest elixir for brain health. Um, and it's amazing how, you know, how much more powerful it appears to be than nutrition, even sleep. And those things are very important, but exercise is in a league of its own. Uh, and we, we studied this question extensively about eight years ago. And I didn't, I initially just refused to believe this was the answer because it seemed too simplistic. I thought there had to be something more powerful. You know, I thought DHA or something else could have had a bigger role. But as important as sleep, nutrition are, exercise kind of takes the cake. Um, and I suspect it's because it impacts so many systems. So exercise is going to impact glucose disposal, insulin sensitivity, uh, inflammation. It produces growth factors for neurons, BDNF. So, you know, it's you, you tell a person that the most important thing they can do for their brain health is to exercise. That's where you get into the haste. Hey, if you could do three hours a week, that's great. If you can do seven hours a week, it's even better.